you know, as you get more and more natural disasters, whether natural disasters or via the results of humans changing the climate, it still comes down to that we're losing available resources for an ever increasing number of people. I mean, I know I sound like a, a skipping CD here, but uh, I mean, no, that's, it, it just comes down to carrying capacity and overpopulation. It really does. And the resources and the land is stressed and it's, you know, we're aware scientifically that in the future, it's going to keep shrinking. And that's probably, you know, part of this issue that we're all experiencing. Currently. And, and, you know, Lovelock has stated that he thinks by 2070, the 6 billion people will be dead. I'm like starting to think he's an optimist. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> what do you go on? <laughs> like, I mean, that's a big statement too, because these are astronomical numbers to begin with. It's, it's 75% of current uh, human levels, basically. Oh my God. Shrinking. We're about what? We're right? about what? Uh, you know, 8 billion right now. So 6 billion, that's 75% you know, humans can go bye-bye, you know, that kind of stuff. I mean, you, you might live to see it. But, uh, <laughs> but the re reason is that there's a lot of ecologists who are now saying that an increase of 4C will be sufficient to cause human extinction because of all the havoc that will unleash, you know, climate-wide and so on. And we're going to hit 4C at some point this century. We really are. And uh, wow. th that's when things are going to get interesting. Yeah, and it just goes back to this, this statement that you said is just less resources, more and more people. I mean, the equation doesn't look good. <laughs> you know, it's too much. I mean, too many people. And, and it's like, I'm over saying, we can say, you know, it's not a popular opinion, but it's a fact now. I mean, look what's happening to our planet. And like, we're aware of it. We know like yeah. there's regions that are going uh, hungry or famine faster than others and you know the whole issue of just resources in general are getting scarcer based off of the temperature rise and loss of land so yeah it's amazing. yeah it's it's <clears throat> there's just so many things happening now you know and there's still the talk you know you look at the cop 26 reports and the little you know put the put the happy spin on it kind of stuff. Yeah, and absolutely. they're still saying, oh, if we can get to net zero emission, everything is going to be hunky-dory fine. And I keep saying, you're forgetting the, the big thing called the oceans. We're an ocean, oceanic planet, not continental. This, the, the heat content in the ocean is now up to 226 zettajoules. When, when I did my, my ocean heat content video, which is what, three months ago, I was saying 200 zettajoules. And that was at 226. And a lot of that heat's being concentrated in the upper layers. And, the, and that, that heat is what's being transported into the Arctic Ocean, as an example. So you're going to melt all that sea ice, and then that's going to create a whole bunch of issues down the road. And... And then from there, and not just from there, but from everywhere, you know, where the heat's close to the surface, it's going to diffuse into the atmosphere. This is basic thermodynamic principles. It has nothing to do with net zero. You, we've already put this, this in place. And now it's going to fall. You can't argue with physics and chemistry. You just can't. And now we put this in place, and it's going to, it's going to follow through. And you're going to get all this heat diffusing. And it's not going to be good. And, and the thing is, you don't even need to have 100% of that 226 zettajoule diffusing into the atmosphere. You can just take one fourth of that. And it's sufficient to cause at least a 4C increase. So again, it's just astronomical, the numbers we're dealing with. And I wanted to get into right. your videos that the last two, I mean, you're, it's a perfect segue because just like the, the Arctic heat bomb, is kind of <laughs> in my mind because of like the warm water like melting the ice <laughs> and then just more like a follow-up on the ocean heat stuff so i mean you I know mean, keep, keep in mind the oceans have absorbed 93 percent of greenhouse gas emissions for the last 50 years so you look at what's happening on the planet the droughts the fires the 
the constant deluge, the flooding, that's just from the other 7%. It's unbelievable. Imagine if, say, the oceans only absorb, say, 40% of the heat. Now you have the 60% staying in the atmosphere. We ought to be dead. <laughs> oh, shit. Everything you ever did. No, I mean, yeah. It's just as simple as that. It's crazy. <laughs> It's it's almost just too much sometimes. So it's like becomes comical, but like yeah, it's pretty serious at the same time. But you know, it, yeah, yeah, it's that is just it's astronomical. It's wild the the amount of energy that the ocean has absorbed. And like you said, like at one at what point is the tipping point of that? Yeah. So back to the I, heat bomb. I think we've already gone past several tipping points. In all seriousness, I really do, and. Uh, Ocean heat is one of them. Uh, the sea ice is another one. I'm going to say that right now. I um, mean, even though, you know, the Chuck Cheese is experiencing a little cooler conditions, so the ice is kind of returning. But you look at the rest of the Arctic base, you look on the Eurasian side. It's, yeah. Green, Greenland, uh, the ice, the sea ice around Greenland is at a record low right now. I just saw the latest data that Zach Lay put out. I mean, that's wow. at a record low. You know, so right now the Chuck Chi is probably the anomalous region right now. Of course, Alaska is just a little cooler than the rest of the Arctic. <laughs> Yay! Well, but just, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. That always seems to be the case. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I just, I, I actually was just interviewed yesterday by a gentleman out of New Zealand who oh, was wow. putting, putting together a documentary called Seasick. And okay. uh, so he wanted some. It was, it was a 30 minute interview, you know, if you, I don't know if we will use any of it or, you know, maybe, you know, 22 seconds up, or whatever, but, uh, you know, it, it, and we were discussing, uh, you know, the current state of the ocean and was, we got onto the, the ocean heat content and he asked if this is dis uniformly distributed and it's, it's a lot of it's mostly in the Northern hemisphere, but when you look at the sea surface temperature overall, yes, it is higher than the historical average. But when you look at like the Southern Ocean, not by much, if any at all. And when you get closer to like from the, circum the Antarctic Circumpolar Current towards the continent itself, you actually see cooler conditions. In fact, looking at air temperature um, distribution from like, what does that show? Like 65 degrees south latitude to the pole, 60 degrees, something like that. Around, around Antarctica was much colder than the average. The rest of the planet was much warmer than the average. So there's a split going on, like, you know, why is this? So that, that remains to be seen. But, you know, we got talking about overfishing and, you know, I looked at a report from the UN saying that, oh, well, the number of uh, sustainable fisheries has decreased from 90% to 67% over the last, how many decades? But in reality, uh, it's like basically 90% of the f world's fishery stocks have been overfished. Oh my goodness. You know, so, and then when you, and, and then I, I tied this into that, you know, you have the stratification that is now taking place in the upper ocean and that's gonna limit productivity. I mean, we've discussed that before. So if you're gonna limit productivity, you're going to limit the number of fish that's available to be harvested. And also, there's a lot of fish species that are, you know, some people call them endothermic, others call them mesothermic, whatever, but they maintain a body temperature that's warmer than the surrounding water temperature. So that requires a lot of energy, which means you got to eat a lot and you need to have a higher oxygen content in the water. To go to diffuse across the gills. Well, if you start warming up the the, ocean, the upper oceanic uh, water layers, we know that gas solubility decreases with temperature increases. That's going to stress out those organisms. So they and this this is true in general. This is true for you know any organism. If they suddenly find the water they're around too warm for them, they're going to do one of two things: go deeper in the water column, where you can find a cooler spot that's more comfortable. Or, or move to the poles, where, or both, where it's more comfortable. But then you have the issue, okay, so you, you relocate to an area so that physiologically is better for them, where they're 
what will be there for them to eat? They may not find food to eat. You know, so their choice is stay where they're at, eat their food, but burn up metabolically, or save your metabolism, but you may starve because you can't find your food. I mean, it's not like, you know, a little land turtle, you know, crawls out on a log and, you know, bass in the sun, he gets a little too warm, takes a dip in the pond, and then he climbs back out. These organisms don't have that option. Mm -hmm. I, I did that video, you know, you know, ectothermic organisms is moving around because, you know, the oceans are warming up so greatly. So, so that's, an, that's another issue. 